Hey guys, if I had to think of a brand in 2022 that really stood out to me, that was exciting, that had a ton of products that really worked well for me, not to mention affordable, the brand that comes to mind is Moira Cosmetics. And while my regular subscribers could have probably predicted this because they've heard me go on and on about Moira this entire year, I still feel like they're a relatively slept on brand. Although they are picking up some steam. I saw Ali Glines and Juicy Jazz and Lauren May Beauty do a video on them. So they're definitely gaining traction, but I still think that they're not as popular as some other brands. So today I wanted to share with you my top 10 favorite picks from Moira. So if you're new to the brand, these are definitely the products that you'll want to start with. So let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. So before we start, even though this is a top 10, I love all of these products almost equally and it was really, really, truly hard to rank them. So just keep that in mind. Nothing here is a bad product that I'm gonna mention at all. So let's start with number 10, which is their Luminizer Lip Gloss. This has been one of my favorite lip glosses this year. I'm wearing it today in the shade Juliet. And even though I really love the Maybelline Lifter Glosses, I do feel like these are kind of similar to those in the way that they don't feel sticky. They really have a nice smooth texture. They almost seem to plump out your lip lines and make your lips look a little bit smoother. And unlike the Maybelline ones, these do not have any scent to them. So if you don't like scented lip products, I think you'll really enjoy this formula as well. It comes in really beautiful colors. I don't actually have every color, so the swatches that you'll see here are not all of them and I definitely would pick up some more colors because this formula is just so comfortable to wear especially now in the fall and heading into the winter time when things are really dry these just feel so good on my lips and they're just very easy to kind of slick on quickly and go and even though they're gloss and they don't last a long time I just find myself reapplying them throughout the day so if you're looking for a non-sticky very hydrating lip gloss I would definitely give these a try they're also very affordable and I do have a coupon code for 15% off of Moira as well so I'll leave that down in the description box. Coming in at number nine we have the Ooh La La blush palette or I guess it's a face palette because it has a highlighter in it and this is just the most beautiful blush palette. You have some cooler tone blushes, some really warm tones, all of the blushes are matte and then you have this highlighter right here and the highlighter is a little bit on the glittery side so it's not my favorite highlight but what I like to do with this and I mentioned this in my genius hacks video from I think it was last week if you mix a little bit of highlighter with a tiny dab of face moisturizer it takes down the shimmer and glitter and just sort of turns it into a really subtle highlight so that's usually what I do if I'm using this palette I just take this highlighter down a notch with a little bit of moisturizer and it doesn't look as glittery but by all means if you love a glittery highlight then you're gonna like this one a lot I just think these blushes are so soft they're they're really velvety, very pigmented. And I love the color variety in here because you have like a soft baby pink, you have a mauve rosy color, there's a brighter pink, and then you have some kind of peachy bronzy colors as well. So it's just very well-rounded and it really just has such a nice range of tones within one palette. I also compared it in another video to the Charlotte Tilbury quad that came out this year for holiday. This one, not the highlighters specifically, but the two blushes that are in the Charlotte Tilbury look so similar to two of the blush shades that are in the Moira palette. They're really, really close. And the blushes were really what was drawing me to the Charlotte Tilbury one. And 
I realized I already had these colors in this palette and it's a lot less expensive. I wanna say it's around $17.50. So this is a great blush palette. I don't reach for a lot of my blush palettes, but this one I do keep out on regular rotation. Another product that's fabulous for Moira is their Mega Concealer. This is coming in at number eight. And what I love about this is that it's one of those very rare concealers that has good coverage, but doesn't look cakey or dry underneath my eyes. I have very dry skin, so I need a concealer that's gonna be very creamy and look natural, especially because I have a couple of fine lines underneath my eyes, and concealers can sometimes settle into those, or if they're too drying, they just make the lines look more apparent. And I love that this one doesn't do that, but at the same time, it still gives really good coverage. It has a beautiful satin finish. It's not glowy and it's not too matte. It also claims to be waterproof. I haven't tested that aspect of it out, but it is really long lasting on me. So it's just an all around really good concealer that I don't hear anybody talking about. Next up at number seven, we have the new Star Show Shadow Pots and these just launched very recently and I am in love with these. These are so beautiful. And in the video where I first unboxed them, I was showing how similar they are to the Hourglass Scattered Light Eyeshadows. They come in the same kind of little pot with the little plastic insert that kind of presses them down. They're a very loosely packed shadow. They're not a loose shadow and they're also not completely pressed and they come in the most beautiful colors. Some of them are insanely pigmented. Others are more on the sheer side. It just depends on what color you get but they're really beautiful. They make such a nice impact on your eyes. They're awesome for one and done shadow looks. The only thing I would recommend with these is to use a glitter primer like the NYX glitter primer just to help them to stay on your lids because they do tend to have a little bit of glitter fallout here and there. So definitely put them over a sticky primer and that'll solve that issue. I'm actually wearing two of them today, low key, which is a really deep charcoal gray. And I use that on the outer portion of my eye. And then the other one is Eureka which is a bright silver and I put that from the inner corner kind of to the middle and these really make more of a bolder kind of statement look on your eyes but if you want something softer in a cream shadow I highly recommend Moira's Lucent Cream Shadows because those are beautiful they're kind of similar to the ColourPop Super Shock shadows in that they just give a beautiful wash of color on your lids but they're not overly bold they do come in a lot of beautiful colors I only have a couple of them and I keep meaning to buy more because I love like how well they stay on your eyes and they don't crease or budge. But like I said, if you want something a little more bold, then I would go for these instead. And so I kind of love both of these equally and I'm kind of cheating and sneaking another one in there because I really love the Lucent Cream Shadows really just as much as these. So I wanted to mention those as well, but I just think they're a completely different kind of look than these shadow pots. Coming in at number six, we have the Diamond Days Liquid Eyeshadows and these are another incredible incredible eyeshadow from Moira. They come in the most beautiful colors and they don't crease or budge once you put them on your lid and then let them set down, they stay put. If you want more of a sheer wash of color, you can apply it to your lid and then pat it with your finger and blend it out and that'll kind of diffuse the color. But if you want the full color that's actually in the tube, I would just try to not get too much product on the little doe foot applicator, just kind of wipe it off and just pat it on your lid that way and just let it dry. Don't blend, don't do anything. I usually apply my crease colors, like a powder shadow first, and then I'll just go in with this on top and just kind of press it on. And once it dries and sets down, it doesn't move the entire day. I have heard a couple of people tell me that these kind of burned their eyelids when they first put them on. And I wanted to talk about that quickly because that happens to me too, but not just with these. It happens with just about every liquid shadow that I've tried from the Stila ones to the the elf ones and I kind of think it might be the product drying down because when I first put them on they feel kind of cooling and it feels really nice and once they're dry I don't feel any kind of burning sensation or anything weird I think it's like in between putting them on initially and then when they're dry it's that in between phase and I think it's just as the liquid is drying it kind of is creating like a tightening effect or something and that's what I'm experiencing I've worn these so many times and I've never had any kind of irritation from them at all. It's just that weird little feeling as they're drying down and then it kind of goes away and I forget about it. So I just wanted to mention that 
quickly because last time I talked about these, I got some comments from people who said that. They never said that they got irritated from it either. They were just talking about like the weird feeling on their lids. And I feel like that's kind of universal with every liquid shadow I've tried. So it's not just these, at least for me. Next up at number five, we have the Signature Ombre Blushes. These are one of the first products that I actually tried from Moira. And I was initially drawn to these because they just looked so beautiful. They have the ombre effect, and then they have this gorgeous kind of garden scene with the butterflies and the flowers embossed into the powder. So they initially caught my attention just because of how beautiful they are. But then when I actually tried them, I was really pleasantly surprised by the formula. It's very soft, very velvety. They have a nice amount of pigmentation, so you don't have to use a lot. I feel like these are gonna last me forever and ever. They'll probably go bad before I hit pan on them at this point. And I was also really impressed by how long lasting they are for a powder blush. They last all day on me and most powder blushes I feel like are gone halfway through the day. So I love the staying power and I think it's just awesome to have such a beautiful blush like this Available at drugstore pricing. So these are another big big favorite um, Number four is their micro tip liquid liner This is actually something that they sent me in PR initially and then I ended up buying myself a new one because I love it so much This is my go-to liquid liner that I use almost every single day because this little micro tip is fantastic if you have hooded eyes I usually like to draw the thinnest line along my upper lash line because I don't wanna take up any of my lid space that actually is showing with a liner. So I don't wanna make a really thick line. And this one just helps you get right up against your lash line and you can make the skinniest line ever with this. And also you can make a really small wing. I also love how jet black it is. And as you're going along your lash line, it doesn't skip or like run out of ink. And again, it's very long lasting throughout the day. So this is another great one and I I believe Huda Beauty also came out with a micro tip liquid liner really recently too. It's so similar to this one, so much so that I would actually call this a dupe for that one. And I also forgot to mention that this is not a felt tip, like one of the stiff felt tips, it's actually a brush tip. So it does move as you're going along your lash line and I love brush tips. So this is such a good liner. Next at number three are their set and correct pressed powders. And if you guys know me, you know that I have never liked powder on my dry skin ever. So the fact that it's ranking so high up and it's even made this top 10 is pretty incredible. But this product actually changed my mind about powder. There have been some decent ones at the drugstore, like the number seven one. I felt like it was okay, but I still felt like my skin looked slightly dry with that one. This is completely undetectable on your skin. When you apply this, it just gives that mattified, poreless look without looking like a powder. I can use this all over my face, under my eyes, it doesn't matter. It never looks powdery, it never looks dry. I have two shades, 100 and 200, and honestly, they're supposed to be kind of like correcting powders, but I don't feel like they have enough pigmentation in them to actually correct. I've never noticed the difference between either one of these colors. I feel like they're kind of the same but I don't love these because they color correct because I really feel like they don't. And if you're gonna buy them for that reason, you might be a little bit disappointed. The reason that I love them is just because of how finely milled they are and how natural they look on my skin. I generally have never gone for more matte makeup looks because having dry skin, I always wanted to use really dewy products, but sometimes I don't wanna look shiny, especially on camera. I wanna have more of that mattified, blurred look and dusting a powder on top is like the easiest way to get there, but I've never found one that I really loved until now. So this has just been my number one go-to powder. I think these are just incredible. Coming in at number two, we have the Love Heat Cream Blushes. So these are a Tower 28 blush dupe. So if you've seen the Tower 28 blushes, they come in very similar packaging. Even the product inside is like identical. They feel kind of sticky and tacky when you first pick them up, but then as you go to blend them on your cheek, they dry to a powder finish. They're not sticky at all. I'm wearing this one today, which is called I Miss You, and it's a really bright, cool tone pink. I'll put a little bit more on just so you can see kind of the application. I just put like two or three dots 
and then blend it with my finger, but you can also blend it with a sponge or a brush. And I just love how soft and pretty these are and it's already dry, so you don't have to worry about it being sticky. And it also doesn't mess with my foundation underneath or make it separate or move around. I would just recommend more of a patting motion when you apply them instead of swiping, but these are just such a lovely texture. They come in so many beautiful shades and they're really long lasting on your cheeks as well. They last all day for me. And because they dry down all the way, you can also apply a powder blush on top and even extend the wear that much further. So that's something that I do sometimes as well. But honestly, these are my favorite cream blushes of the moment. They are only $8.50. So these are a great deal. And then in the number one spot, I'm gonna have to give it to Moira's eyeshadow palettes because those are the thing that I think excites me the most about the brand. And I highly recommend the eyeshadows that I'm gonna show you that come in this style of packaging. Because their formula over the years has been a little bit hit or miss, I know some of you mentioned being a little disappointed in the mini palettes. I wasn't as crazy about that formula, but this series of palettes, which I'm gonna show you swatches of in a second, have the best formula. They have rich velvety matte shades, and some of the palettes like Falling For You and A Moment With You actually have cream shadows inside them as well and those are phenomenal. If I had to pick my three favorites, I would probably say Falling For You is my number one. This one had really gorgeous pinks and purples mixed with neutrals. It's just so soft and pretty and these are the colors that I tend to gravitate toward the most. I also love Time To Shine. This one is more of a neutral palette but it has a couple of greens in it and golds and I find that these warmer tone neutrals really make blue eyes pop a little bit more so I love wearing colors like this. And I also really love cool tones. So Endless Moonlight is another favorite one of mine. This one actually, it has some cool tones and some warm mixed in, but it has a lot of gray shadows that I tend to use very regularly. And in today's video, I actually used some of the grays from this palette to put down as a base before I use the shadow pots on top. So I would say these are my three favorite palettes from Moira, but I'll quickly show you the others that are part of these two collections, just so you can see all of the swatches and what they look like. I would say if you're gonna try eyeshadows from Moira, definitely try these palettes because they, to me, have the best formula. I did try some of their older palettes and I felt like the formula was pretty good. Then I was a little bit disappointed with the formula in the mini palettes. So these I think are great. And a lot of people ask me if I prefer these or ColourPop. For me, they're kind of similar. I like both equally in a different way. I think that ColourPop has a lot of glitters in their shadows, especially in their shimmer shades. Whereas the Moira shimmer shades tend to be a little bit more satin to metallic. They don't really have a lot of of glitter going on. So I think if you like a little bit more subtle shimmer shades, then you might like the Moira palettes more than ColourPop. I also think Moira's matte shades feel a little bit more velvety. Sometimes the mattes in ColourPop palettes can feel slightly scratchy while others can have that velvety feel. So ColourPop is a little bit kind of hit and miss with their matte shades. And I think these Moira palettes stay very, very consistent. So I do like both just kind of for different reasons. So those are my top 10 favorites from Moira, if there were any products that I would say stay away from, the first thing would be their eyeshadow sticks that they came out with recently. I wasn't a big fan of those. I felt like they were very dry and they were hard to draw onto my lids. I felt like they were tugging at my skin and they just really, I don't know, they weren't as creamy as I was hoping that they would be. So I wasn't a big fan of those. Also, they had released some glitter eyeliners and I'm not really a huge fan of glitter liner to begin with. I can't really imagine myself wearing them very often, but I did try one and it was super hard to remove and I was still cleaning glitter off my face like a day or two later. And I also wasn't super into their cream bronzer and this could just be a personal preference thing, um, but I liked the formula. I just felt like the shades that they have are way too yellow and orangey looking. I just didn't think that the colors were very natural looking, so I wasn't a fan of the cream bronzers just because of the color range. And I would say everything else is just kind of somewhere in the middle. I would definitely start out with these top 10 products first and then branch out and try some other things. There are still some things that I actually haven't tried myself. So if you have questions about anything, if you have your eye on something, definitely leave it down below if you wanna know how it is and I'll do my best to answer it if I've tried that product 
product. But like I said, I haven't tried everything, but I have tried a lot from this brand. So be sure to leave your questions down below. And also, I just wanna thank you guys so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video. I really appreciate it so much. And if you have some time and you'd like to check out some other videos on my channel, I'll go ahead and put my Vlogmas playlist right up here. I've been posting every single day of the month of December, and there are a lot of really fun videos here. So definitely be sure to give those a watch. And if you're new here, I'd love it if you would hit the subscribe button before you go. Thank you so much, and I'll see you all in my next video. Take care, guys. Bye.